Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, 300 Dominicans to benefit from a skills program funded by the Maria Holder Memorial Trust. The number of reported deaths climbed to 20 as a high-level CARICOM delegation visits the Bahamas and Grenada pledges 100,000 US for hurricane relief in the Bahamas. The details coming up. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new all-in bundle. With flow, it only gets better. First stop in the news, over 300 Dominicans to benefit from a U.S. $141,000 project spearheaded by the Maria Holder Memorial Trust. Andrea Louis reports. The Maria Holder Memorial Trust has made its name known in Dominica through the refurbishment of five primary schools which were damaged by Hurricane Maria. However, the trust is giving back to the country's rebuilding efforts not just in the field of education. The West Dominica Children's Federation applied to the Maria Holder Memorial Trust to sponsor a year-long program aimed at helping Dominicans develop the needed skills to bounce back and readily earn an income after the impact of a natural disaster. We decided we could train them in tiling and plumbing and sewing, um, ham radio operations, chainsaw operations, um, small-scale agriculture and also small engine repair, which we did in collaboration with um, the Youth Development Division. So we gave them the opportunity to earn an income, no matter if there was a disaster that had just happened. The project, which got underway in January this year, is more than halfway complete and is targeting communities all over the island. So far, we've, we're about two-thirds of the project um, we've done numerous communities, for instance, for the sewing we've done Yampis and St. Joseph. For the agriculture we've done um, Point Michel and Grand B. Like we will go into Grand B twice a week, for every week for about nine weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we did um, the ham radio, we've done two communities so far as well. We've done Mont Prosper and we've done Bagatelle. And um, we're going to the Kalinago territory next. We've already met with them and they have shared their interests. And um, we are going to start as early as the 14th of September. To date, 173 people have been certified with the aim of having 300 certified by the end of the program. Some of them we will be giving their own business cards and helping. We have already done this small business education session with them on entrepreneurship and we will be assisting them with business cards so they will be able to market themselves as available for work. 
NDFD is the certifying partner for all the trainings that we do um, because on our own we did not have the capacity to, to do the training and also to certify the training but with NDFD as a partner the, the recognized certificate that the participants will get and will that will be able to help them to get uh, a job and it will also help them to get services from the NDFD as well. The scheduled end date for this project is January 2020. The Dominica Labour Party will take up contributions as part of fundraising efforts to help the Bahamas when it launches the Salibia candidate, Kozia Frederick, on Sunday. Prime Minister Skerritt spoke of the fundraising effort on DBS Radio on Thursday. It was also mentioned on The Hang on Kyrie FM. This fundraising effort is separate and apart from government's pledge this week to donate 100,000 US dollars towards recovery efforts in the Bahamas and the establishment of a disaster relief account at the National Bank. There is also some non-monetary assistance which was announced this week. That's in the form of personnel from the police, emergency and health services, utility companies and the private sector. Government is also offering to provide school spaces for Bohemian students who may need it. The government of Grenada, meantime, has pledged 100,000 US to the immediate relief efforts for the people of the Bahamas. Dr. Mitchell said Grenada's contribution is in keeping with an agreement among leaders of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States that all members will make a similar pledge. He has been in direct communication with his Bahamian counterpart, Prime Minister Hubert Minnis, expressing solidarity and support for the government and people of the Bahamas. The Prime Minister said 15 years ago when Grenada was battered by Hurricane Ivan, many rushed to their aid and today they are in a position to help the Bahamas. He said such monster storms may force the region to rethink the whole concept of disaster management. In other news, Vice Chairperson of the Commonwealth Students Association has thrown his support behind the formation of a National Students Association here. Ajani Laborn of St. Lucia was on island recently to conduct a leadership training session among the country's youth. The effort was spearheaded by Dominica's CSA representative Jonathan Jones. Another of Jones's agenda items is to establish a National Students Association by 2020. Laborn believes the National Students Association will be extremely beneficial to national development. I see the formation of a National Students Organization as being the next big thing for Dominica. When we look at youth governance, we tend to look at it from the standpoint of the National Youth Council or other major, major youth organizations which work to empower and educate young people. However, the National Students Organization uh, works or, or can work within the schools, which is a controlled environment, to build or nurture some of the key leadership traits and skills that are so necessary towards the development of our young people. So I see it as the next thing to happen. and. We definitely will be working from our, our standpoint as CSA reps and through Jonathan who is working on the ground to make this happen as soon as. As regards Dominica's National Youth Council, the Bourne says a students association will complement the work of the council. I also think that it's important to look at this as an institution which could partner directly with the National Youth Council. In St. Lucia, the students council is seen as a branch of the NYC and I believe that a, certain a similar structure could be implemented here in Dominica to make things uh, happen efficiently, but also to serve as a guide uh, to the Students Council, which of course may comprise of a majority secondary school students. LeBorn believes the National Students Association will help the youth develop a greater sense of accountability from an early age. Beyond this, I think moving forward, we also need to look at seeing this as a, a new concept which which will begin to see uh, students be a bit more accountable to their peers within schools and communities. And if we're looking at national development, in the next 10 to 15 years, the investment being made within our schools will be seen on a national level. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better.
When persons with TB sneeze or cough, healthy persons nearby breathe in the droplets and the bacteria can lodge in their lungs. People with weakened immune systems such as HIV AIDS, alcohol and drug users, smokers, children and the elderly are most susceptible. Persons with a cough should take precautions when in contact with persons in public places. Cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing. Visit your doctor or health center. You must complete your treatment. TB can be cured even with HIV. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB and HIV. Protect yourself and others. helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. Standardized health care for the elderly and benefits for centenarians are among accomplishments of the Dominica Council on Aging. Andrea Louis has more. The council is celebrating 25 years in existence this year, and during a press conference earlier this week, First Vice President of the DCOA, Nigel Lawrence, said the institution has increased its reach and influence around the country since it started operations a quarter century ago. One of our achievements have been that we've been able to, to develop more what we call affiliate groups. We have now somewhere in the region of of about 29 affiliate groups around the island. These are groupings of other, other groups that have set themselves up in their respective um, communities to try to spread, help us spread the word, help us um, advocate on behalf of all the persons and also to take care of all the persons. That is one of our achievements. While the DCOA has made strides in getting institutions to improve health care services for aged individuals, there is still a lot more work to be done. We are conscious that there are a lot of um, care giving or residential homes, as they call it, homes for retired or older persons. What we have done is that we have worked a lot towards trying to help them upgrade their standards and we're looking at now to try to establish standards that these institutions should make, should, um, should um, um, adhere to. Um, we have done that and um, the sectors of the uh, people within the health, the health department are recognizing our work in that and we are, we are working towards that. Bringing to light the plight of the elderly who are victims of abuse is another way in which the DCOA has helped create a better environment for the country's senior citizens. We have become so, so prominent in the minds and of, of most people in their respective villages that we could as well open up a, a crisis center because there are lots of persons who are abused and who call us many times for for guidance and for help. We, we, have not, we are not doing all what we should be doing or all what we can do, but it is the little that we are doing as to where we were 25 years ago. It is very, 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 it's a, it's a big achievement. The council can also be credited for advocating on behalf of the country's centenarians and attaining special benefits for them from government, utility companies, and other stakeholders. Andrea Louis. Channel 5 News. And Hurricane Dorian has left a generational devastation across Abaco and Grand Bahama, with 20 confirmed deaths in Abaco alone. That's how Prime Minister Dr. Hebert Minnis describes the situation in the Bahamas in the aftermath of the Category 5 storm which devastated the country. I just returned from an initial air assessment flight on Grand Bahama, which was conducted on a U.S. Coast Guard helicopter. Much of Grand Bahama was previously underwater, but Grand Bahama is now cleared. Some homes, businesses, and other buildings and infrastructure were badly damaged. 
there are a significant number of people in shelters. Then one review from the east, coming central, Sweetings Key and the eastern area had, had suffered quite a bit of damage to homes. Many were destroyed, roofs were disturbed. But what was most significant, those homes that were built on stilts were not damaged. As we moved into the Freeport area, I can report that the flooding had received and most homes in Grand Bahama appeared to have received minor damage. Freeport infrastructurally had done well. However, from a humanitarian perspective, we must consider the psychological impact that we would experience at a later date. There are many in Grand Bahama who are suffering. As the Minister of National Security may have said earlier to others while before he had entered this room, there have been 20 confirmed deaths on Abaco. We expect that this number will increase. The Prime Minister is concerned that the widespread destruction is being exacerbated by another problem inflicted by humans. Just about every Bahamian throughout the country has been worried about loved ones on Grand Bahama and Abaco. We have all heard the stories and accounts of looting and other disturbances. Bahamians are distressed that anyone would loot and further the suffering of those affected by this tragedy. This is a terrible disregard for the safety and security of others. Be warned. We will prosecute looters and other lawbreakers to the full extent of the law. We are a country of law. I have mobilized the full resources of the government for search and rescue missions in both Abaco and Grand Bahama. To reinforce security on these islands, additional police and defense force officers have already been deployed. More security personnel were transported to Abaco today. There are approximately 60 Royal Bahamas Police Force officers permanently stationed in Abaco. And quite a number of these officers have lost their homes, yet they are acting with resolve and with bravery in the performance of their duties. The Prime Minister says there are a lot of Bohemians who need help and that help is on the way. On the Abaco, there is already help on the ground in terms of food and water from local sources. Supplies are on the way from NEMA, the Royal Bahamas Defence Force, the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom and many other sources, including from the private sector. Let me, at this time, thank the private sector for their outpouring of support. There is also other assistance, including Chef Jose Andres of World Central Kitchen. I want to thank the brave men and women of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, staff at our public hospitals and clinic, and other responders for their brave and hard work before, during, before and during this crisis. These brave men and women are saving and protecting lives. They are working hard to ease the suffering of those who have lost so much. Carnival Corporation has partnered with Tropical Shipping and NEMA to collect and deliver NEMA-approved food and supplies donated in South Florida for Bahamian residents affected by the storm. Deliveries will begin as soon as the harbors in the respective islands have been further cleared and are declared even safer. And CARICOM Chairman and St. Lucia's Prime Minister Alan Chastney led a high-level delegation to the Bahamas on Thursday. The CARICOM Chairman is accompanied by Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley. 
The visiting delegation, which also includes Secretary General of CARICOM Owen LaRocque and Executive Director of SIDEMA Ronald Jackson, was due to discuss what support CARICOM may be able to offer in terms of relief and recovery in the Bahamas. 150 officers from the Jamaica Defense Force will be deployed in Grand Bahama and Abaco to ensure safety and security on the islands. There is help coming from the United Nations as well. I met with the United Nations and the Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief, Mr. Mark Lokor, and his team. He offered the solidarity and condolence of the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. The United Nations has pledged $1 million in aid. The United Nations will be sending in more experts to help with the relief and recovery efforts, including the provision and distribution of food and water. The United Nations has also extended help in other areas that we might need for recovery. I spoke with President Donald Trump, who has expressed the support of and pledged the assistance of the United States of America for the Bahamas in our time of need. President Trump offered his condolence to me and my family on behalf of the death of my brother, which occurred yesterday. I thanked President Trump for the enorm enormous generosity of the United States, including the work of the United States Coast Guard in helping to rescue the injured and in helping with other logistical support and air transportation. President Trump was delighted to, that the hurricane damage was confined to two islands as opposed to the entire Bahamas. He wanted me to remind others and the international community that Nassau, the economic engine of the Bahamas, still functions. And he, asked, he informed me that he's certain that I would ensure such information is disseminated to the international community. And I informed him that it would be even better if he were to inform the international community that the Bahamas is still open for business, and he has concurred. Canada has pledged half a million dollars in immediate assistance for the Bahamas. Prime Minister Trudeau noted that Canada is sending representatives to the Bahamas to provide additional assistance and support. Canada is a long-standing friend of the Bahamas. My fellow residents and Bahamians, as Prime Minister, I assure you that no effort will be spared in rescuing those still in danger, feeling though, feeding those who are hungry, and providing shelter to those who are without homes. Our response will be day and night, day after day, week after week, month after month, until the lives of our people return to some degree of normalcy. The people of the Bahamas are already showing their compassion and love of their brothers and sisters of Abaco and Grand Bahama. Robust charitable efforts are underway across the islands not affected. I want to encourage again Bahamians to keep giving and volunteering with reputable charities with proven track record. This will help bring healing, hope, and restoration to those who are now so desperately in need. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. 
Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new all-in bundle. With flow, it only gets better. To end the news, a look again at the headlines, 300 Dominicans to benefit from a skills program funded by the Maria Holder Memorial Trust. The number of reported deaths climbed to 20 as a high-level CARICOM delegation visits the Bahamas and Grenada pledges 100,000 US for hurricane relief in the Bahamas. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You may access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.